Hey tribe, welcome to the tutorials for the iconic granny square bag pattern. Now these tutorials have been recorded in four separate parts so that you can quickly find out what you need to know and get back to your making. Each tutorial is designed to be a companion to the pattern, it's not intended to be a complete tutorial and so you will need to get a copy of the pattern for yourself. You can do that by clicking the link in the description box below. And I've also linked everything down below from the yarn and the hardware that I have used. Hey Tribe, so in this section I'm going to show you how to attach the D-Link to your panel. So you're going to need your D-Link, you're going to need some scissors, you will also need a yarn darning needle. You'll also need about 20 inches or so of the joining yarn and you will also need the panel that has been attached to its reinforcement. Please ignore how fluffy this panel is looking. I went too quickly, I fudged it and I had to go back to fix it and so the material is a little bit frayed because I didn't roll the hems, I had to sew them smaller. So apologies for that, yours will be looking nice and smooth. So to get started with the D-ring, you need your length of yarn and thread it onto your needle. And then you're going to pick up the panel and starting from the back, you are going to put your threaded needle through. Now, as you can see on this one, I have placed the D-ring in the center and so the D-ring actually sits here and here, so it lines up with the second round. So what you do is you place your yarn through where it's going, you can the hair, which is just here, and leave a length of the tail and turn it over and you can see that it's come through. I have gone through the granny square panel and all three layers of the reinforcement panel, so both the lining, the mesh, and then the lining. If you only go through the seam allowance and you don't catch the mesh, then your bag won't be as sturdy and the D-ring will move around a lot more, whereas this is really firmly attached. So to secure the yarn, I am just going to go back through the way that I came, so turn it over and go back in pretty much the same hole. And I'm going to do that a couple of times. I want to make sure that the end of the yarn is really anchored. As you push your needle through, you will feel it go through one of the holes in the mesh. As you can see, the needle fits through perfectly fine. So you want to just be feeling for a hole as you push your needle through. So I've now fed my yarn through three times. And what I'm going to do is now attach my D-ring by simply threading it through, like so. And then I am going to put the yarn back through here and pull that tight. And then thread my needle back through and do the same again. I try and go through each hole a couple of times just to make sure that it's really reinforced and very well secured. Now, as you can see, I have actually gone through the stitch higher up. So I've gone two mesh holes down for every alternate stitch and then one mesh row down on the, in, in, on the stitches in between. So for example, into the first row and then into the second row in a sort of zigzag, just so that my yarn has got enough surface area to really secure the D-ring. I'm going to continue doing that the whole way along. Don't worry about it being patchy because on the way back, you will just fill in the gap so that you get a really nice solid join like this one. So I'm gonna work my way along and then I will see you when I get here. Okay, I've now worked my way across and it is pretty well secured, but as you can see, um, there's still patches. So what I'm gonna do is go back over the entire 
join and I'm going to come out just one stitch further here as well just to make sure that it is all completely covered. So I'm going to go in here and then I'm going to do two stitches along the way back to fill in the gaps and then I'll show you what it looks like at the end. So as you can see I've now worked my way across the other end and I've filled in all of the gaps and it actually looks a lot neater than the first one. So you will get better as you practice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bury the tails of the yarn. I'm going to re-thread my needle with the yarn and I'm going to bury the needle under a few stitches like so and just pull it through. I'll show you now. the yarn, put your needle through a few stitches like so and pull the yarn through and then I'm just going to go back on myself. Pull the yarn and then that end can be snipped and you want to do the same with the other end and then you can snip them off and you are finished. So with the second end, I'm going to bury it through the back just so that the yarn isn't too bulky on the front. I don't want it showing. So I'm just gonna pull through like so, and then do a few going back on myself. Snip the end off and then you've added your D-ring to your side panel. Do it for both of them and then you are ready to go on to the next step.